The following video uses this pattern that's available on bungalowquilting.com to make these bibs. As you can see here, they're made from gingerbread fabric by Moda. So sit back and watch how much fun you're going to have making these. Hi, this is Judy from Bungalow Quilting and Yarn, and you are in the house. Right now, I'm very thankful that you can't see the rest of my sewing room, that my picture here is limited to just this little space. This is right after the holidays, and I was in a flurry of sewing, and so my sewing room is in no shape to show anybody what it looks like. Actually, it's most of the time it's not in any shape to show anybody. So let's get a, a start on what we're going to do today. I want to show you how to make these adorable bibs. You saw the picture of the, of the sweet bibs where I had the little animal faces looking out, um, and the fabric was by Gingerbur. And so now I want to show you with just some basic fabrics how to put these bibs together. I have provided on my website at bungalowquilting.com a pattern for these bibs. You need to cut one piece of your, one pattern piece of your main fabric. You need to cut one of your backing fabric and you need to cut one of some thin batting. You can see how thin this is. You could also use fusible fleece. That would work as well. Um, you can also use some uh, spray adhesive when it comes time to putting the, the fleece onto the fabric. Um, I don't like spray adhesive, but I know a lot of people do, and so that is a possibility. All right, so when we cut our pattern out, we have um, our front piece for the bib, and there is some um, joining of the pattern pieces that has to occur because they're on two separate pieces of paper to get them to scan into just regular sheets of paper so people can print it out at home. So you have to connect those two lines on the pattern piece without overlapping them. So connect those two lines, don't overlap them, and then cut out your piece. So here's my front, all right, and here is my back. Why does this look different? Well, that's because you have to cut one piece in reverse. Do not forget that you must cut one piece in reverse because these have to go right sides together. So if you cut both of those pieces the same with the... Um, <clears throat> right sides going the same direction, you're not, it's not going to work. So you're going to put these right sides together. So one of these has to be cut with the pattern piece one direction, and then the other one, you either have to flip your fabric over, or you have to flip your pattern over, because you have to have a reverse piece so that you can put them right sides together. So what you need for this project are those two pieces. You need your piece of batting, and this, of course, doesn't matter because there's not a right nor a wrong side. You need pins. You need Velcro or I should say hook and loop, hook, hook and loop tape, and you're going to need a scissors, not a rotary cutter. Okay, let's get started. We're going to put our batting onto either one of these onto the wrong side. All right, so you can use spray adhesive, you can use um, a fusible, batting or a fusible fleece, I'm just going to choose to pin it very, very well. So I'm going to put my batting onto here, and then I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to put my other piece, so these bibs will be reversible. I'm going to put the other piece right here, right sides together. All right. Then I'm going to pin it the whole way around. So this has got some curved edges that if you haven't sewn with curved edges before, this might be a good beginner project for you. Now this is not considered curved piecing. Curved piecing is when you put a curved edge, like a convex edge of a fabric into a concave edge of fabric. So this is not curved piecing. This is simply sewing along a curve. So this is not something that's going to be difficult for someone that is a beginner. Now you're going to have to turn these this right sides out. So what I'm going to do um, is put a pin here, and I'm going to put a pin here. This is where we're going to start and stop, all right, because we have to leave something for turning. We have to leave an opening for turning this right sides out. And don't leave your opening for turning it right sides out along a curved edge, that is just going to be way too hard to sew it so that it looks nice because you're going to have to do a tiny little bit of hand sewing on this to get it to look nice. 
Okay, so now we have, or to, to close up that edge. So now we have all of our pins placed. Let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we're at the sewing machine and I'm going to start where I put that pin where I'm going to leave an opening and I'm going to backstitch just a little bit right there. Now look at the seam allowance here. It's not a quarter of an inch. It's more like an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. When you're doing these, you have to make sure that you're doing a smaller seam allowance because you're going to be going around some pretty tight curves and you want those curves to be smooth when you're um, turning them right sides out. So uh, I started right here, backstitched, and the other thing is, is make sure that you're catching all of your layers. This is the back of the bib, this is the front of the bib, or either one, it doesn't matter because they're reversible. But make sure, first and foremost, that you are catching all of your layers as you're sewing. Because if it is a small seam allowance, you want to make sure that you're going to catch all your layers. When you flip it right sides out, if you don't catch all those layers, you're going to have a hole. So here we are sewing around these curves. And like I said, this is not sewing curves. Sewing, when you say piecing curves, that means putting a concave piece, or a convex piece into a concave piece. That's not what we're doing here. We're just going around curves. So this is not a bad project for somebody who's a beginner sewist when they're first starting to sew along the edges of curves. Make sure you pick up your foot and um, move it as you need to. Now this is a walking foot. It's one of the things I didn't say that you were going to need a walking foot, but you are. You're going to need a walking foot. And here's where it's going to become critical that look at that, how much different there that is. That's because we're curving, um, we're going around curves. You see how the batting is sticking out and the front of the bib is receding and then this will be sticking out somewhat. This is what I'm saying. Because you're sewing around curves, things tend to slip. So it does help to have adhesive batting or it does help to have uh, a spray adhesive on these. I don't like spray adhesives because I don't like to inhale that. I worked in an ICU and I, I see all kinds of people with pulmonary issues. Um, I would prefer to tell people not to ever use anything that's aerosolized, but if, if you're not using it much and you're using it in a well-ventilated area, you're fine. you'll be okay. So here we go. We're going around these curves, and I'm going to check after I finish this to make sure that I have indeed gotten all of those layers in there, because if I haven't, I'm going to have to go back and sew over that again. Like I said, this shifts, and that's why you have to have a walking foot. And fabrics, even if they're by the same manufacturer, um, these are both from Moda. Um, they're from the same manufacturer. They still can shift differently. They still stretch differently. Just um, not, not all fabrics are going to be the same, even if they're from the same manufacturer. So these are really tight little curves that we're going around here. So again, like I said, eighth of an inch. Okay, so here we're looking like we're doing pretty well with keeping the fabrics together. Um, the batting is a little bit tucked under. Like I said, always be sure if you've got a needle stop down setting on your machine, use that. Lift your foot and turn it. Feel free to manipulate this anytime by lifting that foot and turning it. So we're going to go all around. Oh, my pin's going the wrong direction there. That's all right. And then we're going to stop where that spot is um, that we left for the opening. And we're going to backstitch a couple of stitches. Now I'm going to go around this whole thing and I'm going to check. Okay, so now I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to make sure that I check to see that I've got all my layers caught in that seam allowance. You want to make sure that you've got all your layers caught in the seam allowance. Where I'm particularly concerned was back here, because look at that seam allowance got larger. Um, but no, I've got all my layers. Do I have all my layers here? Yes, I do. They're all caught. And if they are, even if they, if you decide that they're, that they are all caught, they, they have to be caught with enough it can't be just hanging on the very, very edge. See, like this. I've got to make sure that I've got enough in there so that when I turn it, I'm not going to have a hole. I'll show you that. Okay. 
So I might make some reinforcements right here. I'm going to go around here and I'm going to reinforce that curve because I think that's going to be a weak spot. And I'm turning it right sides out because I really didn't catch enough of that other piece of fabric. So it's okay to do that, to go ahead and reinforce that. See how I reinforced that? Okay, so check all the way around, check the entire bib like I just did, check to make sure, check, check, check all the way around that you did get all three layers in there and that you've got a, enough of an amount that it's not going to work its, oops, my hand's in the way, that it's not gonna work its way loose in the wash. Because you're gonna wash these bibs over and over and over again. Okay, so here we are with the whole thing you know, on the on the inside, we've sewn it all right sides together. Um, I've got my batting on this side, and then my two pieces of fabric are right sides together. So this is our sandwich. Um, like I said, boy, I sure am glad you can't see my whole sewing room right now. It is really bad. When you cut these out, I forgot to mention too that when you cut these out, if you've got a motif, make sure you center that motif because it's going to be really cute to have that. I've got this little dog running across the meadow with the little cherry tree here. Make sure you kind of try to center those motifs. When you So you could cut this pattern out of tissue paper and lay it over your fabric, and then that would really help you to see um, what you've got going on underneath with the fabric. So I'm going to go and I'm going to trim this because do you see how this has got a little bit, what I think maybe is too much excess fabric. Um, I'm going to trim that a little closer to my, my seam. All right, so I trimmed that little piece off. There is no need to clip curves. I want to say that again. There is no need to clip curves. We were raised clipping curves all the time on our curved piecing, on our, not piecing, I'm sorry, on our, yes, on our curved piecing and on our curved seam allowances. And all curved, all that does is to create a much weaker seam. Um, there are going to be times when you need to clip and to snip, but this is not one of them. If you make a small enough seam, like I showed you, and you are like right on, you can see how small that is. And you um, have reinforced the areas like I showed you I did here because you feel like maybe something is going to be too weak. You'll be okay. Um, it just is going to weaken it. So I'm going to show you that we're going to turn this right sides out now by starting out with this piece here. I'm going to use a, a dull pencil. Okay, if you've got a turning bodkin, great. If you've got a um, chopstick, that's great too. Nothing pointy. Um, now, what you don't want to push it through between the batting and the fabric. That's not where you want to push it through. You want to push it so that you're turning it right sides out. And this will become apparent once you do this. This might not be easy to understand from my saying it, but feel your area between your two pieces of fabric. So where you want to turn it is not, is not into here, into this space, into the space between the batting and the fabric. You want to turn it into this space between the two, um, this reminds me of, speaking of spaces like this, reminds me of the meninges on the brain, <laughs> the epidural space and the um, subarachnoid space. That's if, you know, if you're a nurse or a medical professional and you know what I'm talking about, this is gonna make sense to you. Okay, so this is a space here, a potential space, and this is a potential space here. So don't turn it right sides out through here, turn it right sides out through here. So that's the track you wanna go through. So this is the track I'm picking right here. I'm picking um, the between the two pieces of fabric. All right, and so you have to, you might have to manipulate it a little bit and try to grab at it till you can get it. All right, so there I'm, I'm between those two spaces now. I'm not in between the batting space. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it right sides out with my pencil. Like I said, use a turning bodkin, use a chopstick, use whatever you can grab. I just grabbed a pencil here in my sewing room. And this is where we're gonna start and we're gonna turn it right sides out through, aha, we did come out through the right space. See that? Okay, and you can look at that. Make it really nice by pushing that dull end of the pencil and it's a really nice curved edge. It's a nice curved edge. It's not, it's not where you have, you know, straight parts to it. I don't know how better to say that. It's just got this nice rounded edge. So now I'm going to take that out like this and I'm going to push the rest of it out. All right. 
right. So I'm pushing the rest of this out. Okay, so look at how, this is what I'm talking about, how your edge looks kind of funky. It doesn't look, see that? It doesn't look like a nice curve. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to push it with the dull edge of this pencil and get it more rounded so that it's much more rounded and so that my seam is fully out. See that? How your, your seam is fully pressed, pushed out. You don't want there to be lips. You want that seam to be fully pushed out. Okay, so I'm going to go around and do that in here. Look at that, how nice that curve is. This is where a turning bodkin with a, it's a metal item, metal object. A turning bodkin is a metal object that will, um, have a, it has got a little ball on the end and it helps you to make those curves nice. Look at how nice that curve is. Okay, so then we're going to go to the ironing board and we're going to iron this so that it's all nice and flat. Okay, so now this is ironed nice and flat. Do you see the little dog running through the meadow and the little tree? And then there's another little dog over here. And oh, it just turned out so cute. And I guess I considered that to be the backing fabric. And I considered this to be the front fabric, but boy, it's super cute either way. Okay, so now you have to, now that you've pressed it out really nicely, look at, now I want to em emphasize again, look at these curves. Look at how well these curves came out. They didn't get all um, squared off uh, because I didn't, use a big seam allowance, I used a smaller seam allowance. Now if you wanted to go and top stitch over that, that would be fine too if you really felt like you needed to do that. I don't feel like I really need to do that. Um, you can also add some quilting lines in here, that would be really cute. If you wanted to quilt it across, maybe make diamonds, you know, this direction, that would be really cute. The sky's the limit to what you, you could possibly do. Um, but now what we have to do is sew up that opening where we turned it right sides out, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to fold these edges in. Now the batting is going to be sticking out a little bit more, and so you're going to have to fold that down in with, with that piece of fabric. So at first, just go ahead and, and fold. Fold them in. Fold those edges in. And then you can either use those nice little quilt clips, or you can use pins. Now, I am not much of a gadget girl. I, Even though I own a shop and I could sell you all kinds of gadgets, I'm just really pretty basic. So take note of that because whenever I mention something that is a gadget that works, it, you're going to know that it's going to work really, really well because I'm not one that's... I like to spend my money on fabric, on really awesome fabric, and not so much on the gadgets. Okay, so there <clears throat> I folded this in really, really nicely. And now I made a knot. I've got a needle threaded with one, with one thread, with one single thread. So um, I made a knot. I'm going to hide the knot on the inside. So I'm going to go into this and put my knot in between those two layers. All right. Now this is where you are going to sew it so that it looks like so that it is more like um, when you do a binding on a quilt. All right, so you're going to put your, your, your needle through this fabric here under the tunnel and then come out on the other side. Now I'm going to remove this pin. All right, again, I'm going to tunnel under the fabric right where I went in. And I'm going to come out on the other side here. So tunnel under the fabric over to the other side. You could probably make smaller stitches than what I'm making here too. Yeah, definitely make smaller stitches than what I'm doing here. All right, let's try a smaller stitch. But this is going to get washed a lot. Bibs really just get washed an awful lot. But it's so much fun to go to a baby shower and give somebody a gift that you've made. I mean, I... I, I don't like bridal registries. I mean, I know I understand that for people that don't know what they're going to get for somebody, um, I get that. But I like to make things for people, and I, I love to watch their reaction when they open it and they know that you've made it. It just says so much more. Okay, so that's how we're making these tiny little stitches all along the side. 
And then after we're done with this, the last thing we're going to do, and if you, if you are doing these bibs, you can make multiples for somebody for a gift. You can just, you know, do like three or four, or maybe one for each day of the week. Wouldn't that be cute if you did a Sunday through Saturday, all different days of the week. If I can get that to be a little more. That a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to do that a bit again. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do here. So we're going to keep doing this until we get that edge closed. All right, so it needs that knot. All right, so now we're at the end. We're going to knot it. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put the Velcro on it. Now this is going to be a reversible bib. <clears throat> Come out here and then clip. So this bib is reversible. So it doesn't matter where we put the Velcro. I'm going to put the Velcro between here and here and stitch one side to here and one side of the Velcro to here. And then we'll attach it like this. Okay, so now we're back at the machine with the Velcro. We still have the walking foot on. A um, couple things about Velcro is that um, it's expensive, so you're only going to need a tiny little piece. You don't need a very big piece at all. And um, you're going to need to pierce it. So you might want to put a Microtex sharp needle on your machine or a denim needle. Um, I'm not changing my needle because into this mine's just a universal needle, but I know what my sewing machine does and how it works. So I don't think that I need to do it. Um, so I've got my hook side down here. It doesn't matter if it's your hook side or your loop side, it doesn't matter. It's on um, this side of the Fabric, uh, the bib. So then when you go to put the other piece on, it's going to have to go on this side because it's going to have to hitch together like that. The other thing about Velcro is hang on to your threads before you start stitching because sometimes when you are stitching something really thick that's difficult, you need to hang on to this or your threads get sucked down into the other side. And you want, because this bib is reversible, you want both sides to look neat and tidy. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing. Back stitch, just a couple of stitches. And then I'm going to stop in the corner, pivot. All right. Stop in the corner, pivot. you're new, using a neutral colored thread, I always use light gray thread. I use it for almost everything because it absorbs color around it and it doesn't, it's not offensive on top of something white because this is a white piece of Velcro. Backstitch. And then I'm going to clip. Now this is a small little square. You don't need anything big whatsoever. And when you uh, when they get when it gets put in the laundry, it needs to get put together when when it goes in the laundry so that it doesn't grab onto the socks and everything else. So so now there's my hook side. Oops, there's my hook side of the Velcro. Now I need to put my loop side of the Velcro on to this side right there. All right. So again, I'm going to hold on. To my threads. I don't want them to get sucked down in. Backstitch just a little. is not um, adhesive Velcro. If 
you have adhesive Velcro, you can use that too, and it, you can still sew across it. The only thing is, is that adhesive might gum up your needle, so you're going to need something like Sewer's Aid or whatever to put on the needle periodically to keep that gumminess off of your needle, because it won't sew if it's gummed up. But you can sew across adhesive Velcro, and if you feel like having the adhesive on there will help you to hold it in place rather than a pin, you could do that, or you could use a little bit of glue um, on a glue stick. So I'm trimming this nice and neatly. Okay, so look how nice and neat that looks on this side because that's a it's a reversible bib. You want it to look neat and tidy. And so there is there's my Velcro. Um, I'll give you a quick shot of the bib where you won't be getting a full shot of my disastrous area next to my sewing machine. So there is my darling and adorable bib. It's going to be a major hit for yourself if you have a baby or as a gift for someone else. Isn't this darling? Here's the opposite side. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I look forward to you watching more from Bungalow Quilting.